Okay, hello. You know what? I I just I turned off my whatever. The internet wasn't working. Now it's working. Okay, today's picture is Agni from Fire Punch. Uh, I don't know. After after he just feels happy. Oh, I drew his eyes too freaking close together. I was I was really lazy with this one. Honestly, doing the drawing part of this stream is like annoying. Like it starts to get annoying, but obviously I still have to do it. Hold on. Okay, I drew it. Uh, you know, it's pretty good. His jawline's too square. Mm, you know, it just looks obviously it just looks worse, but whatever. Okay. Now we gotta go here. We're gonna go Pomodoro study time. We're gonna open this up. Now it's time to work. Time to work. Open this. Open. Timer is not working. Here. Here. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me try to get a grip now. And, um... So we were just studying 15.3. We just finished 15.3. So... Let me look at where I went wrong. So they took the total energy and they put it together. You know what? That was one hour ago. Uh, you know, today I was supposed to shovel my neighbor's snow, but I forgot. And the other guy did it, and then, uh, you know, I couldn't do it. He said they're going to pay me too, so. No money for me. Money for silly guy 90. Unless you subscribe to my channel. Unless you give me subscribe. Sub to me on Twitch. Anyway, just kidding. Not really. Kidding, please. Your money is too pot. Okay. Anyway, just kidding. But uh, wait. What if I move? Fifteen point four. Comparing simple harmonic motion with uniform circular motion. So I have to do this for two more hours, and then the video is gonna end, and then that will be four hours, and maybe I can squeeze. One stream it and then what will that be? That'll be eight hours and I'll have ten hours left. God, I hate I hate studying. Okay. Some common devices in our everyday life exhibit a relationship between auxiliary oscillatory motion and circular motion. The pistons in an automobile engine go up and down auxiliary motion. Yet the net result of this motion Circular motion of the wheels in an old fashioned locomotive figure 15.2b. Here, drive shaft goes back and forth. I already read that active figure 15.3 is a view of an experimental relationship. Hold on, everything hurts. The ball is attached to the rim of a turntable in radius A as the turntable rotates with constant angular speed. So they're talking about this active figure. Fuck, I messed up my Agni drawing. Rest about that actually. Consider a particle P, circumference of a circle of radius A, as in figure 15.14A. The line O and P, angle phi with the axis at T equals zero, a circle, a reference circle. We're comparing simple harmonic motion. Uh, I wonder if I'm even... Okay, whatever. I think the important part is getting to the pendulum and dampened oscillation. I think this is like a chapter no it's about. It's just like not. Anyway, you know, I talked to my neighbor and he doesn't even have a mobile phone. He had to call me on the damn. Call me on the whatever. If he has internet down there. He's living in the Stone Age.
particle moves along the circle, the projection of P on the x-axis labeled point Q moves back and forth along the x-axis between the limits x equals plus minus. Notice that the points P and Q always have the same x-coordinate. From the right triangle OPQ, we see that this x-coordinate is x, x at t equals a cosine omega t plus phi. So that's like the normal thing that we did. The expression, no, this is important. This expression is the same as equation 56. Actually, hold on, let me check something. Sorry. Saturday. Okay. Yep, never mind. Go back to. T Sorry, I messed up. Okay, okay. Here we go. This expression is the same as 15.6. So basically what they're saying is in simple harmonic motion, the thing moves like basically in a circle. That's why it goes like cosine and sine and sine and co cosine and sine and then it's cosine and sine. A pattern to make a circular motion. This constant phi for simple harmonic motion corresponds to the initial angle OP uh, axis, not original poster. Uh, times O and P. Ha ah, ha 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 ha. The radius A of the reference circle equals the amplitude of the simple harmonic motion because of the relationship between linear and angular speed for circular motion is. B equals R omega. Velocity equals the radius multiplied by omega. Go look at 10. I'm not going to go look at 10. Chapter 10. Maybe I should. Rotation of a rigid object along a fixed axis. I don't know. Go read. Actually, that in like the the first six geometry and figure is the component of this acceleration is negative omega a cosine omega t plus phi the, this value is also the acceleration of projective point q along the x-axis as verify by taking the second derivative of equation Guys, taking like his. Okay. If you look here, look, pay attention to thing. It's even more. Pay attention to this thing. It looks like. Point five shows the position of an object in uniform circular motion at equal zero. Oh wait. Shines from above and projects a shadow of the object along a screen below the circular motion. What are the correct values for the amplitude and phase constant relative to it? to the right? The simple harmonic motion of the shadow. Five and zero. One and zero. Uh, C. I mean, I D. I. Okay, I have no idea. And there's an example question. I guess I went. But I don't even see any, like, things. 
don't even see any um formulas, so I guess we're gonna it's like the that we learned back in the old days. Back in the old days, like three hours ago. <sighs> the amplitude, it goes up and up. I think it's one meter. And then the phase constant is uh, going to be zero. To be. You know, I don't even know. That's literally just guessing. A particle rotates counterclockwise in a circle of radius three meters with a constant angular speed of eight rads. Rad per second. At time equals zero, the particle has an x coordinate of two meters and is moving to the right. Determine the x-coordinate of the particle as a function of time. Okay. If you go to the old formula. Remember what we just studied like two hours ago. So if you look here. Oh, blah, blah, blah. oh crap. Down. Determine the x-coordinate as a function of time. Here is x0 a cosine a cosine omega t plus phi. So xt equals omega cosine omega t plus phi. I, it wasn't it wasn't omega t. Hold on cameras it wasn't oh it's not omega t it's a cosine right right <sighs> and it's moving to the right well i don't think anyone cares about that but x equals two meters Mega T, mega equals eight rads per second. Radius of three meters, which is amplitude. Amplitude is three. So now, two meters equals a cosine. So three cos eight T phi divided by three. Well, you get the idea. This is basically it. I think it should be. 2 meters equals 3. I think you have to divide the 2 meters as well, but anyway. Go back here. Solution. Conceptualize before you understand the relationship. Sorry, I'm not speaking very clearly either. Between circular motion of a particle and simple harmonic motion of its shadow. Described in active figure 15.3. The particle, the circle is under constant angular speed. It's 15.3, so here it is. Oh crap. Okay, whatever. Oh, so they wanted me to solve it as well. Oops. Well, I can still solve it here. How about we solve it? I didn't see the answer yet. So, 2 over 3. I think it's arc cos or cos negative 1 equals 8t. So now you have to divide it by 8 to get time. So, oh, and I got to charge my phone too. I forgot I took my phone off the charger. Wouldn't want to, wouldn't want, wouldn't, wouldn't, would not want my phone to run out of battery. That would really suck. Oh, and I forgot to turn the light on too. Not perfect. You're supposed to make mistakes in life. Life is all about making mistakes. 2 divided by 3 is 0 0.6667. To, you got to take the arc cosine 8.4 rad and then you divide by 8 to get seconds. 
So now the amount of time is 1.05 or 0 0.105 seconds. That's how much time it took. That's how much, you know, what, what, as a function of time. If they wanted me to solve for time, 0.8 rad. They didn't even want you to solve for time, so multiply by 8 again. 0 0.841. Write the x coordinate as a function of time, and now b, find the x component. Find the x component. Sorry, I just made like some nasty mouth noise because I, I was testing if the cat if the microphone worked. Find the x component of the particle velocity and acceleration at any time t. Okay. No problem. Of the particle's velocity and acceleration. So basically they want you to do that except for velocity and acceleration now. Look at the formula. Omega A. Pause the formula. Sine omega t plus phi. Negative w squared a. Or no, it's not. It's omega, omega t plus Yeah. They're both negative. Okay. Now we gotta go back. Go back here. Okay. Now, this is the velocity formula of VT equals and AT equals this. Okay. Now, now they want you to find the. <laughs> find it as a function of time so since we already know omega we still there's the first problem still apply so our amplitude equals three meters their speed equals eight x equals uh, two meters to the right function of time so velocity t equals negative eight 8 times 3 sine 8 t plus 5 which is 0 and then acceleration equals negative negative w so negative 64 64 3 cos 8 t eight times 3 24 and then I think they want you to move it over as well I mean uh, what I even do before oh crap they because you had the two meters already so you could you could isolate for everything but here you can't okay well they just want you to find as a function of time right so Whatever. I think this is my final answer. Because this is one big thing. Okay. Here. This and this are my final answer. Negative 8. Okay, well I guess you can simplify it a little more. Fine. Negative 24 sine 8t. Negative, like, 6 times 3 is 180 plus 12, 192 cos 8t. Okay, whatever, fine. Right, you got me. Now I gotta move it here. Solution. Actually, here, I could put the chat over here, right? Opening, I've been, like, pressing the chat. No. Okay. Okay, great. Well, anyway, here. Here, I got it. Negative 24... The negative 192 meter sine 8t and then the phase shift oh i forgot that's how they found the sh phase shift so like i forgot to add in the phase shift so the phase shift isn't actually zero hold on because now i gotta think about it 
How could I have forgotten about the the, the phase shift? Okay, two over three arc cosine. No, no, I haven't read. I haven't read, so that's why it's okay. But yeah, okay, so phase shift does matter. Finalize, although we have evaluated these results, remember that these same results apply to the shadows, which is moving in simple harmonic. Okay. I still don't know what phase shift is, but that brings us to the end of the chapter. Now we're at the pen pendulum. Pen pendulum. Pendulum. I can't say that word very well. Make it to 15.5 and then 15.6, and then we're going to start on waves. A pretty important. It's just chapter. I don't know, maybe I can start with a uh, calculus. Calculus. But then eventually I'm going to just swing back. Obvious. Whatever. Oh, I've been watching. Oh, I forgot to talk about the bear. I watched the bear and thought it was really good. You know, it's like, I don't know what it's like to work in a kitchen, but that made me like not work in a kitchen. You know, I like the characters and everything. That's what I want to talk about, but that's more important to talk about during a video game. When I'm playing video games and also it's not my break, so I'll talk about that. Okay, now we're going to talk about talk about the pendulum. Well, pendulum mechanical system that exhibits periodic motion. Consists of a particle like Bob of mass and suspended suspended by a light string of a bell. So you guys know what a pendulum is, right? Grandfather clocking was cool cool. So I'm making those So now we have the force of tension equals negative mg sine theta. And equals negative g over l sine beta. Okay. Let's read a little bit. But I think about it. Procrastination really is the enemy of studying because it's like when I'm reading this, I don't have any deadlines due, so I feel pretty like coherent. Or like I understand this stuff pretty well now. I feel like. But anyway, we're not done yet. We still have like four chapters. So I have to complete like four chapters. Okay. Crap that we have to do. I'm gonna have to study a little harder. I have a minute. Actually, in two minutes, it's gonna be. Okay. Negative FG MG here. I, I gotta write this. Also, I don't know why I switched to using this pen. Force tension equals. It's because I was. I don't know why I switched to using that pencil, but I do know why. It's because I was shading in Agni's hair. Squared theta over. Square. G. L sine theta. Considering theta as a position, let's compare us to three. Does that have the same mathematical form? The right side is proportional to sine theta rather than two theta. We assume it's small. We can use small angle approximation. Which sine theta equals sine. Basically the angle's so small that it's okay. Like to like use it as a shortcut, but only if it's like like ten percent. Oh only if it's like ten degrees anyway. Water.
okay. That was a nice drink of water. And now we can do our um mega equals G over L. Which is basically the same as uh K over M. But anyway. Go here. Accuracy of less than 1%. Okay. Do the motion so those in degrees. Oh, there's a break. Okay. Let me take a break. So. So what's up? Nothing. Things work. And if I want to take a break, there's nothing I can do. But that's probably, that's basically the point of a break, right? Oh, hello. What I've been watching, I've been watching Rosama. The the AI VTuber. Interesting. So it's really amusing too. Big fan of watching her talk talk about Ren. Interesting. That like they could do that and the guy. Dude who made metal. Metal. It's like, how do he even do that? Sweeper, how many walls? See my sweeper skill. But yeah, like, you know, I was thinking, like, what cool would it be if I. I made something like that, but instead of making like an AI thing, I could just make a video I always wanted to. Like, I was thinking like, you know, it'd be hard to make a video. Oh. It's pretty hard to make a video game. Right? So like, how would I, um, and then it's like, is your video game going to be good, number one? It's like there's a lot of things that you can do in this world where it's like a long amount of time for very little reward. Like the only reward is like your own self-satisfaction. Like the question is like, is that even enough? Or is that, is that ever enough? I think something. Something bad happened up died. Yeah, she go. I think they left the dog out.
I'm having a really good sweeper again. Plus one, then I hit a ball. So I play mind sweeper all the time in uh, high school. Uh, computer plus. Double a lot. Okay, what breaks over? I hit. I have 39 mines left out of 99. You can do the math. I think it's like 60. But uh, okay. In other words, the freak period of frequency. Okay, I can do this, and it smells like strawberries. Two pi over om. Oh, this smells burnt. They burned something. Anyway. Because a pendulum. And pendula. A pendula. Of are of equal length. She is constant. A slate with the same period. The symbol. Pendulum can be used as a timekeeper because its period depends on its length. Local value of G. Okay, I gotta go check what's happening. All right, whatever. Uh, my sister burned something. My sister burned the uh, the thingy, some sugar, or something. Oh, she's me. Anyway. Anyway, in other words, the period and frequency of a simple pendulum depend on whatever gravity. Simple pendulum can be used as a timekeeper because this period depends only on its length and the local value of g. Convenient device for making simple acceleration. Okay, oh, you know, I've been looking at my thing, but I can just look over here, or I can just look at my other computer. A grandfather clock depends on the period of a pendulum to keep correct time. Suppose a grandfather clock is calibrated correctly and then a mischievous child slides the bob of the pendulum downward on the oscillating rod. Does the grandfather clock run A slow, B fast, or C correctly? Suppose a grandfather clock is calibrated correctly at sea level, taken to the top of a very tall mountain. Does the grandfather clock now run A slow, B fast, or C correctly? Okay. Since the period is affected by 2 pi L over G, so length over G, which is gravity. Is that true? The length of the string. So if some kid 
slides the bob of the pendulum downward, I don't think it would change, so I think it's A. Or it would run correctly, so it's C. 15.6 C and but the one on the grandfather clock if the kid if the guy takes it to the top of a very tall mountain let's say that the gravity let's say that length is one and gravity is also one then it would be two pi if it's then it's one over two so it's the same scenario as before so now it's two pi root two which means that it actually runs fast now. It runs like faster because it's being multiplied by a number. So B. I don't know where we're going to find the answer to these. Now here it is. Christian Huygens. 1929 to 1965. So he's dead now. The greatest clockmaker in history. Suggested that the international time of units could be defined as the length of a simple pendulum having a period of exactly one second. How much shorter would our length unit be if his suggestion had been followed? So if T it's mean. suggested that an international unit of length, I don't know. Conceptual. Based on your experience in observing swinging objects, oh, okay. Well, I didn't even bother to look at the answer. That dumb of me. What I don't understand. I don't understand why it's t squared g over four i. Where where did that formula come from? Oh, he he isolated it. He he isolated L. How much shorter would our length unit be? Okay, I didn't really pay attention to like. Okay, hold on. Even if I even if I saw the answer already, I still have to try it. I still have to try to get it right. Okay, and also let's lift this a little bit down like that. Alright. Christian Hugh. T equals 2 pi length G. Isolate, we're isolating for L, so T over 2 pi equals now you square it now you have l over g and now you multiply by g t squared over 4 pi squared times g equals l that's how they got the answer you do t where period is one second so it would be 9.8 over 4 pi squared 9.8 divided by 4 pi squared. Now if you look here, 2.8. Hold on, I must have done I must have done 1 squared times 9.8 divided by 4. 2.48. I don't I don't really I'm really close. Like it looks like it's it's not even close. What the hell? Hold on. Oh, divided by... Okay, yeah, I'm stupid. I forgot that pi was like a... I forgot pi was a unit of measurement. I thought it was rad. I thought it was like rad. Okay, I still got it wrong, so hold on. Divided by... Okay, 3.14 squared times 4. Okay, now I got it right. So my formula was right. I just like... I just got it wrong. Because I'm an idiot at this game. Okay. What if Hugans have been born on another planet? What value would the G be on that planet such that the meter based on Hugh's pendulum would have been our merit? Okay. So now what they're asking is that it, they're asking that 
t equals all of this so now they're asking one second equals two pi where length is one meter over g and the period would be one second What would the value be to be one meter? Okay. Well, hold on. Is this one meter for it to be one second? So squared. Oh, crap. I guess I got to get rid of this. One equals two pi L over G. L over G. Now divide it here. So one over two pi. Now square it. Squared equals 1 over g and now if you invert it 1 divided by 6.28 and now you press the up button which is 6.28 6.28 would be the gra how it would have to be the gravity i think it's wrong again no planet in our solar system has an acceleration due to gravity that large. Hold on, how do I get this wrong? Four times, okay, 3.14 squared. Four, 29.5. Okay, it's like the like this. Basically, t equals two pi l over g. Now we're isolating for l. So t over two pi. So now it's t squared over four pi squared equals l over g. I put the I put the units in too early, and also now I'm making a mess everywhere. Not like peeing my pants. I miss that was, that was a stupid joke. Okay. okay. You can invert it like this. Now it's 4 pi squared over t squared equals g over l. And now you can multiply it by l. And now you get, uh, since l is um 1 meter, and t is one second, you just have four pi squared is the answer. Okay. Average silly guy 99L. A physical pendulum. Suppose you balance a coat hanger so that the hook is supported by your extended index finger. You give the hanger a small angular displacement. With your other hand and then you re and then release it, it oscillates. If a hanging object oscillates are about a fixed axis and does not pass through its center of mass and the object cannot be approximated as a point mass, we cannot treat the system as a simple pendulum. In this case, the system is called a physical pendulum. Pendulum. Consider a rigid object pivoted at point O it's here. This that is a distance d from the center of mass. Figure 15.17. Gravitational force provides a torque about an axis through O, and the magnitude of the torque is mgd sine theta. Okay. We model the object as a rigid object under a net torque and use the rotational form of Newton's second law. Uh, I don't know sigma. That's the that's the sine sigma. Or summation sign equals pi, or is that pi? That might not be pi. Equals i alpha, where i is the moment of inertia. The object through the axis through O. The result is negative m g d sine theta equals i, and the derivative of theta. Holy crap! Catch a break. I've been streaming long. Is there something? streaming for forever just four hours and then after two more hours that'll be six and then it's two six and it's eight and then I have to do ten more hours game
okay, you know what, I have like five days. If I did five days and I streamed three hours every day, that would have been, that would be like the best outcome. Okay, I can make that happen probably. Actually, I can do better. Okay. Okay, and now they're doing the other formulas, so. Okay. T plus. 2 pi over w equals 2 pi i over m g okay and I, okay okay how many times am i going to say okay this result can be used to measure the moment of inertia of a flat rigid object the location of a center the value d is known the moment of inertia can be Obtained by measuring the period. Finally, notice that when equation 15.28 reduces to the point of a, symbol of a simple pendulum, equation 15.61i equals md squared. That is when all the mass that is when all the mass is concentrated at the center of mass. What is this guy yapping about? Was M G D over I a swinging rod? Okay, after this, I gotta are all my equations. Okay, I know them. I'm gonna have to write all my equations down. A uniform rod of at mass m and length l is pivoted around about one end and oscillates in a vertical plane. Find the period of oscillation if the moment of amplitude of the motion is small. I have no idea what that means. Imagine a rod swinging back and forth when pivoted at one end. Try with a meter stick or a scrap piece of wood. Because the rod is not a point particle, we categorize as a physical pendulum. Ah, oh God. Chapter 10. I didn't look at chapter 10. Substitute these quantities into equation. Wow. 2 pi, 2 pi over 2L over 3G. How did they do that without any numbers? Torsional, torsional pendulum. Okay, I'm getting like pissed off. When does the chapter end? Right now. There's like too much stuff to do to write down like can i get a break nope i six more minutes until my break about to break i'll tell you that much Fifteen point six must be on 15.6 and 15.7 chapter done but honestly that's not good enough for me i have to do chapter 16 as just like to try to get ahead. But like, yeah, this is a lot. Kind of tweaking. Okay. Let's start, I'm going to start by copying all of my, 
all my formulas down. Acceleration K for M X just squared e K M F K S Some of these formulas are redundant, but like, it's okay, whatever, pi, mega, 1 over t, 2 pi, two pi f, 2 pi T two I I was T M X T cos the T T W sign I got T plus phi. T. I'm looking in the camera and my wrists are so small. I'm so ashamed. Wrist cell. It's over. Rope man. W A. Mega A. It's not W. Don't forget. It's not W. W squared A says zero equals cos I zero sign. Okay, there. two. Now we gotta look at 15. Copying my formulas down. Just sit for a little bit. Probably like here. This is probably okay. And then this will be six. K E F squared. Plus half m omega squared a nine squared t plus f k s squared plus half k squared t uh, you get it because they're like squaring everything. K plus E. F K. Squared. Squared. T plus phi. Squared omega. Phi. F K squared plus minus 
k over m a squared minus x squared plus plus minus mega squared minus okay break 10 seconds 10 9 8, 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 break okay force tension negative md sign okay I'll just let me just sit around for t for five minutes so i can recuperate myself and if with that it's going to be one hour which means i've studied for three hours in total Time to play more Minesweeper. Fortunately, I can't show you guys because... Because, um... I, so... Fortunately... Because... Because you just can't, okay? I said so said that you can't talking in a way it's like I'm pretending to be drunk but I'm not even it's stupid I'm gonna regret this when I go back to watch my videos I've I died to a I, I hit 81. I got rid of 81 mines, but hold on. Some water. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I've been watching Neurosama, so I guess I'll draw her next. I'll draw her picture next. Good thing that uh, streamer who made her Annie, like put the uh, put the vods whatever, so I can learn to draw as well. So I just steal it from my. Make a video game. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to play Lucid Dream Simulator because of the video that I recorded got like four likes. I said if I if it got three likes, I would uh I would make another video. So I can't break. I'm gonna have to do that. I'll play some more. You. There's plenty of stuff I can do on the internet. It's gonna be four o'clock though, so it's gonna be basically five o'clock. 
think I'll take a break to eat dinner and then I can probably get another. But like, you know, at, at nighttime, I, I like to relax or I like to rest more. But maybe I'll make like a, well, maybe I, I can do like one video game stream where it wouldn't hurt. I don't, I don't think it's illegal. Last time I checked. And then I can do better in school and then I can get like a good job and then I don't have to worry about money anymore. And if I didn't have to worry about money, I would just stream all day. Never leave my house. Take a shower. Okay. Let's get back to work. E Pie. 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 D I And now we have one more formula T equals two pi root I is that a K? What what is that? What symbol is that? Actually I think this might be the the chapter that I was oh, skip. Whatever. The oscillatory motions we have considered so far have been for ideal system systems that is systems that oscillate indefinitely. So like fifty-five. Now this is fifty around fifty-six. The oscillatory motions we consider the system diminishes. So. It's like the ones we have been doing is like a perfect in a perfect world where energy doesn't get lost. But now we're gonna do like real, real stuff. Also, you can't say this word. Can't cancel this textbook right now. Cancel the textbook. Eat them alive. Mods, mods, eat them alive. Mods, kill them. Okay. Anyway, one common type of force is discussed in. Section 6.4, where the force is proportional to the speed of the moving object, acts in the direction of the opposite of the velocity of the object with respect to the medium. This force is often observed when an object moves through air, for instance, because the force can be expressed as R equals negative BV, where B is a constant called the damping coefficient, and the restoring force of the system is k negative kx we can write newton's second law the well, solution to this equation requires mathematics that may be unfamiliar to you we simply state it without proof when the force is small compared to the maximum restoring force that is when b is small the solution to equation 15.31 is x equals amplitude euler's number B over 2mt get a B over 2m t cosine mega t plus phi where the angular frequency of oscillation is plus k over m minus B over 2m squared The result can be verified by substituting equation 15.32 to equation 15.31. It's convenient to express the angular frequency of a dampened oscillator in the form omega equals omega 0 over b over 2m squared.
Okay, so it's like this. Get it before? Remember before it it went like this forever. Now it gets like smaller as time goes on. Or is it small? The oscillatory character of the motion is preserved. Hold on. Okay. Okay, it decays, a amplitude decays exponentially for motion with a given speed constant object mass. The man ma magnitude is small such that V over 2M equals W0. The system is said to be underdamped. The resulting motion is represented by the blue curve in. Talk about this. V reaches a critical value such that this does not oscillate and is said to be critically damped. So basically, eventually, when you boing a spring, it just stops moving eventually. That's what they're talking about. Medium is so viscous that the force is large compared to the system is damped. Damn, I have to write this down. Rather simply returns to its equilibrium position. Is this even like... Aren't there like, aren't there like questions that I have to do? Here? Are the questions? Yeah, there are questions. Okay. We're not done yet. I wish I, I wish we were done. I wish that we were done, but we're not even close. After I answer all those questions and I get it right, then I'll probably be okay. Then I'll probably be alright, but until then. And we got like one more hour. Don't worry guys, just relax. I almost picked up my phone to play Minesweeper. Recently, I've been having to like sit alone with my thoughts a lot. So basically, it means I'm like, having like to forced, forced to chill recently. Okay, sorry. Solution to blah blah blah. Okay, I don't know. I feel like we're supposed to, we're not supposed to skip this part, but like, goddamn, it's useless. Or actually, this is actually the most useful part because it applies to real life, so never. You have seen that the mechanical energy of a dampened oscillator decreases in time. As a result of the resistive force, it is possible to compensate for this energy by Applying an external force that does positive work on the system. At any instant, energy can be transferred into the system by an applied force that acts in the direction of the motion of the oscillator. For example, a child on the swing can be kept in motion by appropriately timed pushes. An amplitude of motion remains constant if the energy input per cycle of motion equals exactly exactly equals a decrease in mechanical energy. In each cycle that results from resistive forces, a common example of a forced oscillator is a dampened oscillator driven by external forces that varies periodically, such that Ft equals F theta F initial force initial sine omega t, where force initial is constant, and W omega is the angular frequency of the driving force. In general, the frequency omega on the driving force is variable where the natural frequency of omega initial of the oscillator is fixed by the values k and m. Since second law gives that. Okay.
Again, this the solution of this equation is rather lengthy and will not be presented after the driving force. The amplitude of the oscillation will begin to increase. After a sufficiently long period of time, you get this formula. It gives you this formula. Now amplitude, now you can calculate the amplitude of this, which is this is like 57, but I'm just going to add it into my 6. M over squared is omega initial squared squared don't forget the root don't forget oh my god so what i guess i guess the formula is not ugly when people describe a formula as like beautiful they they appreciate its like simplicity like the trigonometric formulas but like this formula is beat as hell it's ugly ass formula like what are you doing bro Sorry, I, I shouldn't be. I'm I'm body shaming the formula. It's so long, long ass formula. It really feels bad. <laughs> On resonance, resonance frequency. I heard this term before in a video game or something. Resonant cascade from Half Life Two. Oh my God, Half Life reference. I didn't know that physics textbook makers were Half-Life fans. We find that V is proportional to sin, sine, mega T plus phi. Rate at which work is done on the oscillator by F equals a dot product F dot V O dot product. At resonance, graph of amplitude, it's force oscillator without dampening. Notice the amplitude increases with decreased damping. B approaches zero and the resonance curve broadens as the dampening increases. The absence of a damped, uh, damping, a steady state amplitude. Do you guys hear about this in Tacoma Bridge? Like the wind would match the frequency of the bridge and then it would collapse. So, uh, L. It's like the perfect. It was like the perfect attack on the bridge. Certain electrical circuits have natural frequencies. It's like when you scream. It's like in the cartoons when people scream so loud that the glass breaks. It's like the person screaming matched the frequency that the that the glass is vibrating at, so that's why it would break. So uh, that's pretty funny. Okay, now we can look here, and this these are like the most imp these are the most important formulas that you're supposed to know. So, oh, you guys pay attention and take a screenshot or something. But anyway, you you can rewatch the vod this vod as many times as you'd like. Okay, so t equals that. Let me check if I have these formulas. T equals two pi i over m g d. Yep. T equals 2 pi LG. Yep. Recorded the rest of the stupid formula, so I'm. Okay, well, now we're, that we're done. Period of the oscillation is blah, blah, blah. First period is a free Okay. Give me a second. One second. 